Hello YouTube. So you read the title, and I'm really curious about what your initial reactions are to it. If you don't mind, take a moment and give me a comment about that. So moving on, what I intend to argue in this video is that there is indeed a wage gap between men and women, and it is in part due to the different ways men and women are treated. First though, let me be clear. The most commonly cited number when it comes to the wage gap is that women make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes. This is technically true, but incredibly misleading. And when people include the clause for the same job, then they are being completely dishonest. What people should be saying is that, on average, when you compare all working women to all working men, women earn 77% of what men earn. As such, it should also be called the earnings gap, not the wage gap. The people who know what I've just told you, and yet still say that women make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes, are deliberately trying to mislead and influence the people they are talking to. They know that the average person hasn't read the studies involved and doesn't know anything about statistics. They know that the average person will hear that and think it means that women are literally paid 77 cents for doing the exact same work as a man who makes a dollar. This is untrue, and I think misleading the public in this way is incredibly immoral, and there should be consequences for doing this. People debunking the wage gap myth will almost always say it comes down to different choices men and women make. Women on average work fewer hours, take more time off, choose lower paying careers, etc, etc, etc. This all makes perfect sense and explains away a lot of the wage gap. And in addition, beyond career choices or work ethic, many women choose to have children. Whether or not they get maternity leave, when they come back to work, if they come back at all, they are now a year behind in terms of actual experience. And in some fields, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to make up that time. On top of this, after having kids, many women choose to focus less on their careers and more on their family. These are effects we see in women far more than in men, so it makes sense that they end up earning less on average, and we see less women in positions of upper management. The smart people defending the existence of the wage gap will at this point shift the discussion towards the reasons why women make these choices. Just recently I was watching Vernaculus and Xenostrad get into this debate and get bogged down by the idea of whether gender roles are biological or social in nature. What I say is it doesn't matter. Whether they are biological or social in nature, gender roles exist and they are extremely difficult to change. If they're biological in nature, that doesn't matter because we go against our biology all the time. It's in our nature to be afraid of heights, yet people go skydiving. If gender roles are social in nature, it doesn't matter because core changes to societal structure are incredibly slow and difficult. And if gender roles are changeable and they are going to change, it's going to be for a much better reason than the wage gap. The fact is, I keep waiting for a good reason why we need to get women and men earning the same amount of money. The only reason I can think of is if you're overly concerned with equality of outcome. If everything is set up fairly and discrimination is dealt with as much as possible, then I see absolutely nothing wrong with one gender tending to make less than another. So now that we've gone through most of the common views on the wage gap, it's time for me to tell you where I stand. First off, the vast majority of the wage gap can be explained by personal choice and has nothing whatsoever to do with sexism. But I'm going to outline three ways I think the wage gap is real and it's based on men and women being treated differently. At this point, I'm going to let you know I won't be backing up my arguments with studies and data. I find discussions on the wage gap too often get sidetracked with defending and debunking studies rather than on making logical arguments. So, my first argument is that some percentage of the earning gap is certainly due to sex-based discrimination because we do have 
documented cases of women successfully suing companies for sex-based discrimination. And whatever number of cases there are, I think it's reasonable to assume that there are also many more cases that have gone undiscovered or where women decided not to do anything about it for any number of reasons. For example, she may have worried about her career being ruined if she's seen as someone who complains too much. Think about it, would you hire someone who just sued their last employer? So that's my first point, attempting to prove that some of the earnings gap is due to differences in the way men and women are treated. I have no idea how much, but if it's more than zero, it makes it hard to claim that there's no earnings gap whatsoever, right? Okay, so my next point is the idea that young women who may get pregnant very likely face discrimination in hiring practices. So let's say I'm running a business. My primary motive is to make as much money as possible. And I'm making a hiring decision and it's down to two candidates. Both are pretty equally qualified. One is somewhat likely to take up to a year off in the near future and then afterwards either quit, choose to work fewer hours, or be generally less motivated. The other candidate is unlikely to ever take significant time off and is more likely to work long hours and be career oriented. I'd be more inclined to hire the second candidate, who is a man, over the first, who is a woman. Is it morally right to do this? No. But I'm running a business here. I'm beholden to my stockholders and my employees to make the business as profitable as possible. And that means making the best choice for the business, not the most moral choice for me personally. What I've outlined here is a pretty simple way in which young women who are seen as likely to get pregnant could have trouble finding a job. This would be my second example of a way in which the earnings gap may be based on sex. My final example is actually based on a study I once read, but I can't find it now, so by all means dismiss what I'm about to say. But first ask yourself if it at least sounds reasonable. The study looked at women working in male-dominated industries in London. What this study showed is something that anyone who has worked in a large company probably knows, that managers are more likely to promote people they like. The study found that after work, the men in the office would all go to the pub for a few pints. They would talk and socialize and watch football, and when it came time for promotions, the managers would be more likely to promote one of the guys they drink with. So what about the women in these companies? Well, when they didn't join the men in the pub, they were seen as not team players, not part of the group, and were generally passed over for promotions. When they did go to the pub, they were often seen as drunks or fakes who were only there to get ahead. Only the women who managed to genuinely fit in were able to benefit from this after-work bonding ritual. What this illustrates is something that likely happens at almost every company. Whether it's the pub, the golf course, or the water cooler, social interactions at work can have a huge effect on who gets promotions or preferential treatment. The thing is, this interaction is generally based on common interests, and we all know men and women tend to have different interests. Men go to watch the local sports team play, and women who aren't sports fans have to either stay behind and be excluded, or go along and be seen as fake or dishonest because it will be obvious that they aren't interested in the sport. This is a basic thing that happens in pretty much any group of humans, but in this case it can have concrete effects on the careers and salaries of women. Why women, you ask? Well, for the reasons I outlined earlier, there are likely to be fewer women in the upper echelons of companies in almost every industry. That means if a woman manages to avoid having kids or prioritizing other parts of her life over her career, she may still end up having a hard time getting ahead because she doesn't know anything about cars. This would be my third and final example of how the earnings gap is based on sex, but this one is not at all based on discrimination any more than there's discrimination in any group of humans against people who fall outside the norm. So, being who I am, I'm not just going to stop with trying to prove the earnings gap exists. I'm going to offer some solutions. To my first issue, which is documented and undocumented cases of gender discrimination, I think that companies should be made to give their payroll information to a government agency, which would be responsible for checking to see if there's any discrepancies in pay based on gender, race, etc. It should not be up to the individual employee to discover and prosecute examples of gender discrimination. Law enforcement should be proactively investigating this issue 
since so many people care about it. For my second issue, which is hiring discrimination of young would-be mothers, I think widespread, nonpartisan, unbiased studies should be done to prove or disprove that this effect actually exists. And if it does, the government should provide a tax incentive for companies to hire more of the demographic of women affected by this problem. And finally, for my third issue, sorry, but this one is on women. If you want to get to the top and you're in the minority in your company in terms of interests, you need to make an effort to fit in. If you're the only woman in your office and all the men are huge football fans, take some time to watch football on your own and try to find something about it you can enjoy. And don't fake it because people will be able to tell. Find some way of fitting in on the same level as your coworkers. Alternatively, you can just try to outperform everyone else without pissing off too many people. That could also work. So that ends my defense of the existence of the wage gap, or as I prefer to call it, the earnings gap. I say it exists, but as you can see, it's not this huge patriarchal conspiracy against women, and it's not active discrimination on a massive scale. There are a few issues women face that should be focused on, but beyond that, the earnings gap is in my opinion mostly a non-issue. So please let me know what you think, and as always, like, dislike, subscribe, or share as you see fit, and I wish you all the best.